Hello everyone and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards and in this lesson number 143 we'll talk about some problem solving skills, specifically a problem solving checklist. You can find a listing of all my lessons from my website developer2architect.com slash lessons and here you can view the lesson or view it in YouTube through a link. Most of my material comes from these two books, The Fundamentals of Software Architecture and Software Architecture, The Hard Parts. Um, however, uh, this book deviates a little bit from these two, or this book, uh, this, this lesson deviates a little bit from these two, um, and I'll show you what I mean. Now, we've been problem solvers all our lives. Uh, when we're in grade school, we would have to locate missing variables or maybe even expand polynomials when math got a little bit harder. Uh, sometimes uh, we are problem solvers with particular puzzles that are for fun. But we're definitely problem solvers at work trying to find a solution for a five nines architecture style or to, to determine how to increase the responsiveness of a system by moving it from 2300 milliseconds to 500, which is a very challenging problem. How do you solve these kind of problems? Well, fortunately, there's some guidance we have. And as a matter of fact, that guidance is a problem-solving checklist that originated from this book. As a matter of fact, it's this book right here. <laughs> now, this is a book called How to Solve It uh, by Professor G. Polia, who was a professor at Stanford University. The amazing thing I'm going to show you here is that this book was published in 1945. Now, I happen to have this exact book because I use this in my mathematics degree in, uh, at university. Um, but what I'm going to show you is a checklist that Professor Polia offered us to how to go about solving problems. And it is amazing how applicable this checklist is in today's world and our daily job as an IT professional. Yet, it was produced in 1945. So let me show you the checklist and then we'll try the checklist out to actually see how it works. Um, Professor Polya suggested four main steps in uh, tackling a complex problem. The first is to understand the problem. The next step is to devise a plan. The third step is to carry out that plan. And then the fourth is kind of doing a retrospective, basically looking back to verify and learn about it. You know, isn't it amazing? We think retrospectives came about as a result of the Agile Manifesto, but, well, I wasn't around in 1945, but those that were and leveraging this checklist were in fact doing retrospectives, and we will do one in this lesson. So let me show you the checklist first. <clears throat> the first step is understanding the problem. And here, it's basically asking the following questions about the problem. What is the unknown? What are we actually trying to solve? Uh, what are the data, conditions, and constraints of the problem? Uh, can you draw a figure or diagram of the problem? You know, isn't it interesting? We do this all the time as IT professionals. We're trying to describe a problem or understand it, and what's the best way to do it is to do a screen mock-up on our whiteboard or to maybe illustrate some of the complexities of the services we're communicating with and just get a picture of it in our minds. It's an extremely powerful, powerful technique. As a matter of fact, I might do a lesson in the future just on that one tip right there in the checklist. But another thing, can you break the problem down into separate parts? This step one, I have found in my problem solving that I do at work to be super valuable because too many times we start tackling the problem without stepping back and really gaining a full understanding of that problem. Understanding the particular conditions and constraints before jumping into solutioning. Now, step two is devising a plan. Now that we have all that in place, what are we going to do to solve this problem? And here's some key questions we can ask in this checklist. Have you seen this problem before? Maybe you can recall something or something related to it that might help you 
in the approach of solving this problem. Can we restate the problem? We did this all the time in grade school. Uh, let's see. Mary drives two miles south and Sam drives three miles west. Each are going 50 kilometers an hour. After 30 minutes, how far apart will they be? Well, I don't know. It depends on traffic conditions and, and the weather and, and the road conditions. But in reality, we turn that into equations. Distance equals rate times time. And that's reinstating the problem. You know, a lot of times problems we have in IT are so complex that we can't solve the whole thing. But maybe we can solve part of the problem, which then helps us see more solutions. Um, also, uh, can we solve it by maybe changing something, uh, restating part of it or changing part of the condition? Sometimes problems we have are so complex we get overwhelmed by the amount of conditions. If we remove some of those complex conditions, then all of a sudden solutions start coming to us. Then we apply those conditions to that. It's a great way of approaching the problem. Also, what can we derive from the available data? This is also something I might actually also do a future lesson on because this is so important and powerful. Most of the time, we don't have all the available data. We have to derive additional data from the data we have. So once we do all this, step three, says Polya, is to carry out the plan. In other words, can you prove that the result you came up with is actually correct. And then these three are ones that I, everyone, must confess have caused me to find a problem and it wasn't the right one because I did not have this checklist. Or I had it, I just didn't use it. <laughs> did you use all of the available data? Did you use the whole condition and also all of the constraints? Sometimes when we're working, we get so excited about solving a problem, we forget to look back and say, oh, but wait a minute, there's two other conditions here we didn't, we didn't address. Uh, I have fallen into that trap so many times, everyone. Uh, this checklist is very powerful to allow us to go back and remember to check to make sure we used all the conditions and constraints. Now, once we find a a solution, then we do a retrospective. We look back and we say, can you check the results? In other words, what we used to call, can you do the math? I mean, does, does our, our solution make sense? Um, I use this technique all the time when I'm doing project estimating. And because we may estimate certain features and I'm pretty confident about those estimates. But then when we roll that all the way back to the full solution, it's not going to take us three years to do it. And that's what this whole point is. Can we check the result, do the math? Also, can we derive the results differently to really verify and prove that this is the right solution? This checklist is really, really powerful uh, for basic problem solving of easy and really complex, difficult problems. Uh, let's try the checklist out and I want to illustrate how powerful it is. Here's a problem, and let me read it to you. A bear, starting at point P, walked one mile due south. Then he changed direction and walked one mile due east. Then he turned again to the left and walked one mile due north, arriving at exactly the point P he started from with only three directions. The question I have for all of you what was the color of the bear? Now, if you want to try to figure this out, uh, go ahead and please pause the video and see if you can kind of use the checklist to puzzle this out. It's a really good exercise because you'll need the checklist to solve this, as a matter of fact. So let's go through it together. And again, if you want to pause, go ahead. But, uh, but let me show you how the checklist works. So what is the unknown? What are we actually trying to solve? Let's take a step back and say, well, the unknown is the color of the bear. That's what we need to try to solve. What color is this bear? Well, what are the data conditions and constraints? 
Well, the only data we have are a bunch of directions and the fact that the bear was moving. Is there any connection between the data and the unknown? Because that's what we're trying to look for with Polya's steps one and step two. Huh, doesn't look like there's much, but let's go on with the checklist. Can we solve part of the problem? Well, maybe if we use these geographical coordinates and just start from there, maybe we'll come up with something which leads to that real powerful one. Can you draw a figure or diagram to represent the problem? Yeah, because isn't it interesting if you start at one point and you only go three directions, uh, how can you possibly end up at that same point? Well, it turns out, let's take a point P. If we walked one mile due south and one mile due east and make a left and walk one mile due north, do you know where on the globe we call the Earth, where that might point P B? It turns out that by illustrating this and drawing it, which is a super powerful technique, we realize why, yes, the only place you can actually go due south and due north and arrive at the same point is, of course, the North Pole. Ah, now, there we go. So, wh what color is the bear? And you say, well, clearly, white. <laughs> but let's use the checklist. Did you use all of the available data? Because I think we have a solution here. The, the bear is white. We've actually solved the problem. But let's continue with the checklist because maybe we didn't. Did you use all of the available data? Let me see. Let's verify the directions. Uh, one mile due south, one mile due east, one mile due north, arriving exactly at the same point. Yes, I did. Can you prove that the result is correct? Yes, I can. A simple Google search, what color are bears in the North Pole? shows us polar bears and they have white fur. So yes, certainly I can prove this answer is correct. Well, can you check the result? Does it make sense? Yeah, it does. I mean, this points to the North Pole. And um, yeah, that is very clever of you, Mark. Ah, but can you derive the results differently? Rewording Polya's question here. Is there another solution to the problem? Huh, I wonder, what about the South Pole? In other words, if I take a point P that's two miles from the South Pole, and I go one mile due south, turn around and go one mile due east. Well, if it's at the one mile meridian mark, one mile due east, puts me back to where I was. And then if I go due north, I arrive at the same point on the South Pole. Oh, I'm glad we had that checklist and I'm glad we didn't make a bet. What color is the bear? Are you stumped? What do we do? Can you verify the result? Sure. First of all, are there bears in Antarctica? Or you could have even Googled what color are bears in the South Pole. And you'll find through the search that there are no bears in Antarctica. So, what color was the bear? White. Now we knew it was white, but that last part, I'm sure to some of you, gave you concern, especially if we were in person and made a bet because once you see the South Pole piece, suddenly maybe that's not the solution. By utilizing this checklist that Polya has given us, we can go through these simple steps and not so complex a checklist to make sure that once we find a solution to something, that we can verify it, that we can see if we used all the data, all the conditions, can we derive the results differently and come up with the same answer? And in fact, we proved in this riddle that we could by leveraging this checklist.
So please, everyone, utilize this problem-solving checklist through these slides. It's uh, form it into just a spreadsheet checklist and utilize it when you're trying to solve any problem, easy or hard, uh, within IT or oh. even in life. So thank you so much. You've met my dog Cody now because we are having thunderstorms and so he is sort of freaking out. <laughs> but this has been Software Architecture Monday Lesson 143, Problem Solving Checklist. Now, um, if you'll all excuse me, I have to do some problem solving using the checklist to figure out how to calm down my dog. <laughs> uh, stay tuned in two more Mondays for the next lesson in Software Architecture Monday. Thank you.